Um, my name is Xavier Lot. I serve as Director of Innovation at the Center for Aquaculture Technologies. Um, let's see if I can move my slides now. And a pointer. All right. Well, about eight years ago, we started working on, on this um, seemingly improbable ideas. We wanted to generate an edited line of fish that can breed naturally and only produce a sterile population of progeny and of a single gender, so either an all-male population or uh, all-female population. Uh, obviously, this is uh, 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 a difficult nut to crack, uh, but we eventually succeeded. And um, today you will learn how we created those lines and how the sterility trait can be propagated uh, across generations. So the, the problem we're trying to address here to solve uh, is economic and environmental. Uh, sterility, as you know, uh, can prevent uh, farm escapees from breeding with wild population of fish and also from establishing feral pest population. While sterility can also increase cultural performance by uh, blocking the development of the gonade and uh, the problems that are typically associated with early sexual maturation, just just an example, in the salmon industry alone, uh, economic losses that are associated with early sexual maturation are estimated in the half a half billion dollars, I believe. Something else that you might not know, though, is that uh, sterility, sterility will likely uh, stimulate investment in genetic breeding program uh, by providing uh, breeders and genetic company uh, the peace of mind that uh, their proprietary genetics can be uh, fully protected. So the point here is that there are many benefits to sterilization in fin fish aquaculture. Um, so in this slide, I just wanted to uh, illustrate the method that we use to edit the genome of fish. Uh, the first step consists of designing uh, 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 nuclease. These are um, enzymes, small DNA scissors, if you will. They can be injected into a fertilized eggs. Um, they will migrate to the nucleus, uh, bind to a specific target sequence, and cut the DNA. And typically, the cell responds to this injury by activating uh, um, a, a DNA repair pathway. Uh, this repair can be effective, but occasionally uh, make mistakes. And th those mi mistakes can lead to the uh, gene targeted being inactivated. And so in this particular project, we targeted two sets of genes, those that govern sex determination and gametogenesis. So now how do we control sex? Well, well in fish, uh, sex ultimately is controlled by the relative concentration of estrogen. We know that high concentration of estrogen leads to female development and low concentration of estrogen leads to male development. And a key enzyme in this balance is uh, the aromatase CYP19A1A, which is active in female uh, uh, and repressed in male through the action of other genes, including GSDF. And so we tested this model in tilapia by inactivating the corresponding gene. And we found that indeed CYP19A1A is indispensable for female development and GSDF for male development. And here you're looking at the sex ratio in the progeny from hemizygote uh, mutant parents. Uh, and you can see that fish completely inactivated uh, for those uh, genes are either completely, uh, are, are completely uh, 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 sex converted into either all male or all female. Uh, when in contrast, the wild type and hemizygote fish uh, have a normal sex ratio. So our results um, uh, agree with the model. And then we wanted to ask what happens if we lose both testosterone and estrogen. And for this, we inactivated CYP17. This enzyme controls the production of testosterone and indirectly that of estrogen. And again, without estrogen, we're expecting male and that's what we see. Um, uh, uh, fish completely inactivated for CYP17, uh, genetic female sex reverted into male, and we have an all male population. These male had no detectable level of testosterone. This is uh, uh, testosterone, um, uh, a plasma testosterone ELISA assay. Also, these male had minuscule uh, urogenital papilla. Uh, it, this is a secondary sex characteristic that depends on the production of testosterone. It, the papilla grows on the concentration of testosterone. Also, these males had minuscule uh, testes producing a, a small volume of diluted sperm. 
Uh, however, those sperms were active and uh, perfectly capable of fertilizing oocyte. Um, and therefore, those male were not sterile. And we concluded that there is an androgen independent uh, spermatogenesis pathway uh, in tilapia. Uh, note that in mammals, uh, uh, without androgen, uh, uh, mammals are sterile. So um, to render males sterile, we targeted the process of spermiogenesis. So this is the process by which uh, spermatocytes undergo morphological changes to become spermatozoa. Um, and we identify uh, mammalian genes that are involved in, in this pathway and inactivated uh, the ortholog of, of those genes in tilapia. And we found that uh, tilapia male, uh, partially inactivated for the tight junction protein 1A, um, produce a diluted sperm with a very high frequency of those uh, deformed sperm with enlarged round head and somehow disorganized meat piece. This is a phenotype that uh, has been described in uh, patients that are suffering from a rare form of infertility called globozoospermia. Um, and uh, those uh, tilapia sperm, um, they formed, had only trembling movement. Uh, and um, um, we, we no, no forward uh, moving sperm and their fertilization success rate was also dramatically reduced. We also found that uh, tilapia male inactivated for uh, this, uh, this gene, ME202, um, develop a translucid testis uh, as opposed to the opaque testis of wild type male. And these testis uh, were fully hydrated, but only produce a teeny, teeny fraction of, of sperm that would be seen in wild type, uh, about a 10,000 fold reduction. And uh, this was further confirmed by histological examination of, of these testis. Now to render female sterile, we uh, targeted genes that control oogenesis. Uh, specifically, we, we targeted the uh, FS, FSH receptor gene, uh, this microRNA gene, which both are expressed in uh, granulosa cell uh, surrounding the oocyte. And these genes are believed to control the growth of immature follicles. We also targeted the vitelogenin genes, uh, which are expressed in the liver and produce this uh, egg yolk protein precursor which circulates in the blood and is eventually taken up uh, by growing oocyte. This protein is, these proteins are believed to be essential for uh, the nutrition of early embryo. And we found that female inactivated for these, these genes are completely sterile uh, with a, a range of phenotype uh, from uh, an, an ovary that is uh, reduced to almost a string-like structure uh, to normal size ovary, but containing a very high frequency of those atritic and atrophic oocytes and anything in between with uh, ovary arrested at the pre-vitelogenic stage. Um, interestingly too, you see that the uh, 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 strength of the sterility phenotype kind of match the order of, of action of those genes in the pathway with uh, the, the most severe phenotype uh, uh, associated with uh, inactivated genes that act early uh, in the uh, oogenesis development pathway. So to summarize, um, we have uh, in all targeted uh, an inactivated 12 gene and we observed uh, a complete sex reversal as well as gender specific sterility. Um, and at, at this stage, I need to highlight two key features of all the genes that we have targeted. Um, the first one is that they all belong to uh, evolutionary conserved pathway. And as such, uh, we believe that inactivation of uh, orthologs of those genes should yield the exact same monosex and sterility phenotype. And the second point is that although these genes control uh, germ cell development and, and, and differentiation, none of these genes are expressed in those germ cell. Instead, they're expressed in somatic cells that are either are surrounding uh, those germ cells directly or in more distant tissues. So for example, in female, uh, they would, these genes are expressed in granular cell, Tika cells and hepatocytes, and in male, uh, uh, only in Sertoli and, and Leidig cells. And this um, uh, strict somatic expression pattern is what allows for the propagation of these lines and, and propagation that we do through germ cell transplantation. So here you have it, a germ cell uh, can be extracted from a mutant fish, uh, a juvenile and transplanted into a wild type uh, recipient embryo that has been previously depleted of his own germ cells. 
the, the donor germ cells will colonize uh, the, the gonade of the recipient embryo to create a chimera. Uh, this, uh, uh, chim in this chimera, the, the, the mutations are silent and uh, this recipient fish um, should uh, normally develop as male and female that only produce donor-derived sperm and eggs. And uh, since they're mutant, uh, this will create uh, or a commercial broodstock that only produce a sterile monosex population of progeny. Well, we found that uh, the, the uh, process of uh, uh, germ cell transplantation is uh, very efficient. Uh, germ cell can be extracted from a juvenile testis, a single juvenile testis or a single juvenile ovary and transplanted into more than 100 embryo in less than an hour. And with a, a colonization efficiency that uh, exceeds 50% and uh, can be as high as 100%. Uh, this is uh, the recipient gonade, of course. And with this approach, we uh, successfully mass produce normally pigmented embryo from uh, albino recipient, uh, which is a visual proof that um, uh, the uh, recipient only produce a donor derived uh, germ cell. And we also, also of course, uh, mass produce all female sterile population of fish um, using a recipient that had been transplanted with a combination of, of germ cells with a combination of mutation here. On top, you have uh, a vitello GSDF uh, double knockout, and in, in the bottom, FSHR GSDF double knockout. And you can see uh, that these uh, uh, female only develop uh, ovaries that are arrested at the pre vitellogenic stage, and some are almost string-like structure. Uh, we believe that uh, this monosex sterility technology can be incorporated into a selective breeding program. Um, the the uh, mutation can be maintained in the breeding nucleus as hemizygote, uh, where no phenotype uh, uh, of sterility and, and, and sex will, will appear, which will then allow for the selection of an elite broodstock at every generation. Uh, and this uh, elite broodstock hemizygote for the mutations can then be in cross to produce a homozygote mutant, which then can be germ cell transplantation and amplified to create the commercial broodstock which then only produce monosex and sterile population of progeny. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, this technology is probably best suited for species with high fecundity and good overall survival, where uh, only a, a limited number of broodstock are needed for the entire production of the seed stock. Uh, here is a, a series of uh, examples listed. Um, the technology will also work well with species that are uh, that carry uh, sexual dimorphic traits. Uh, uh, for example, all female population would be preferred in Atlantic salmon, uh, uh, tr rainbow trout, and carp, where female typically grow larger than male, and all male population would be preferred um, for um, uh, bluefin tuna, uh, channel catfish, and tilapia, where uh, male uh, grow larger than female. And we try to. Uh, uh, quantify the, the benefits of, of growing all male sterile population of tilapia by doing grow-out trials. Uh, here we uh, collected the uh, 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 average body weight gain uh, uh, at months intervals uh, by growing uh, a male and female that are fertile, as well as sterile male and fertile males, all siblings. And uh, uh, we found that at six months of age, uh, uh, male uh, are about 22% larger than female. And uh, at eight months of age, the sterile male are about 12% uh, larger than the fertile male, which is um, uh, in agreement with uh, the belief that uh, energy that is not used for the production of gamete can be diverted to the production of germ cell. Uh, we are now uh, in the process of transferring those technology to new species of fish and will uh, perform the same study uh, to measure the benefits of these culture. Um, to finish, I'd like to thank my uh, friends and colleagues, uh, specifically Takashi Umadzume and, and Spencer Herbert for uh, their uh, contribution to this work, their dedication, and, and for all the uh, genetic and, and physiological analysis that they perform to characterize those lines. And of course, all, all, all uh, former members uh, of our company and uh, all the staff that is helping to keep our uh, fish healthy. And also I need to uh, thank uh, our funding agency, the USDA uh, for um, their support. Mm -hmm. And for this, uh, I, I thank you for your attention. Happy to answer questions. Uh, if you wanna connect, don't hesitate. These are some of the 
um, connection point you can use. Thank you.